So I'm here with Greg Kelly of Gorilla Productions. Greg, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing really good, actually. Okay, so what does Gorilla Pro ah, me. What does Gorilla Productions look for in a band? Um, well, pretty much we just look for bands who just want to go out and play shows. You know, basic thing is, um, you know, we come. Gorilla Productions is based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, originally, uh, the owners of our company owned a club there called Peabody's Down Under. And uh, there were a lot of clubs, and it's pretty much true throughout the country, that don't allow local bands to touch their stages, you know, because they want the national bands to touch their stages, and they don't really embrace the local scene. So what we do is, uh, you know, Peabody's originally started is pretty much like the cornerstone of the local music scene in Cleveland. And uh, they, uh, they sold Peabody's, and uh, they opened up Gorilla Productions. It's two brothers that own it. And that's, you know, we look for bands that just want to play shows, you know, we uh, give them all the tools that they need to promote. And uh, we, we do, we start off in most of our markets with Battle of the Bands competitions, but we give them the opportunity to do other things. Like right now we have two contests going on. We're giving away a $25,000 record deal. And we're also giving away a 25 city US tour to a band. Um, you know, the Battle of the Bands, it's just, it's, uh, you know, for the most part, it's real great exposure. I mean, like we're in, uh, Birmingham, Alabama tonight at the work play, and it's a sold out show with local bands. And it's not, uh, it's not some national touring artist, you know, and all the people that are here tonight are here to support local music. And, you know, we, uh, we want to help bands get that exposure. So basically the bands that we look to work with are, you know, the ones that are, the ones that want to go out and play shows, the ones that want to do grassroots campaigning, the ones that, you know, just want to go out and, you know, touch a stage and, play a show and, you know, see where they end up at the end of the day. So how many Battle of the Bands do you guys do a year? Well, we are in 70 markets. Um, it kind of varies sometimes. Right now, I would say we have about, uh, we we do about anywhere from 10 to, 10 to 25, maybe 30 shows a week. And those are, uh, you know, uh, those can range. I mean, uh, right now we, uh, we just did a we just did a U.S. City tour with uh, artists that we managed. Nicholas Megalis, he's uh, uh, just sold out like uh, the Bowery Ballroom in New York City and um, sold out the Knitting Factory in Los Angeles. Um, so I say battles of the bands. We probably do about ten to twenty. Um, you know, we're getting more into now to doing like national shows, and um, so I'd say about ten to twenty five shows a week, just depending on the week. So um, we have uh, 18, 18 full-time booking agents and 100 part-time employees. So, you know, we need to stay busy so that we can pay all of them. So, um, but yeah, um, you know, we do a lot of stuff. So, um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, each, there's, uh, each one of us, like I, uh, I'm the venue coordinator for Gorilla Productions as well as a booking agent. Um, like I book in a couple different territories, so um, yeah, we do. Uh, we try to do a lot, you know. Just try to do a lot. So, so how long have you been with Real Productions, and how long has the whole school of Productions been around? Um, I've been with Gorilla Productions since uh, 2005. Like maybe like at their yeah, probably at the end of 2005. Um, I, uh, I worked at Peabody's Down Under for my boss, Dan Call, and uh, his partner, Josh Cabot, for like three years. And uh, I was in charge of uh, doing a lot of different, a lot of the underground hip hop shows, like the uh, Belasia Dead Homies and the Tech Nines and the Cottonmouth Kings of the World. Those are the other shows I would do. And, you know, I'd be responsible for uh, doing the promoting for and stuff. Um, in uh, 2006, in October, Dan sold the company, and uh, him and his brother started up Gorilla Productions. And uh, I shortly uh, after, um, you know, after really like sitting back and evaluated, I joined them. But uh, I'd say Gorilla Productions has been around solidly for maybe three and a half, four years. So um, it's, I mean, but uh, you know, it's owned by you know two guys that have over forty years worth of experience combined, you know, booking shows. So what do you think it is about this style of music, the underground, I think, that keeps people coming? Um, 
Oh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily underground. I mean, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's necessarily underground. I would say that, you know, um, I mean, underground music, I mean, it just, it just doesn't really, uh, I would say unsigned, you know, just raw talent. I mean, I've been, I've been with Gorilla for a really long time, and uh, over the past year, I've traveled around the country and gone to a lot of these battles and band shows. And it's just, I think that at this level, you know, I mean, versus when I was working at, you know, working with some nationals, it's, the bands have more heart, you know? I mean, the bands, they, they have, you know, more heart, more drive, more desire, you know? It's, it's probably, it's probably the best, the most purest form of music, you know, because it's, it's just new, it's raw, it's untapped. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, but I wouldn't call it underground. I would say that it's, you know, just unsigned, unsolicited artists that, you know, they just, you know, they never really get that chance, you know? I mean, for the most part, most of these kids that are playing here tonight in front of a sold out crowd, this will be the biggest show that they ever play, you know? And, and, and I didn't make it happen. I mean, like, we gave them all the tools that they needed to do it, but they're the ones who did it. Like these bands went out and you know busted their hides. You know they went out and they busted their butts. They promoted the shows. You know we, you know we live in an era of like this MySpace YouTube era, and it's 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 a great era. Like you know MySpace and YouTube, they're great. They're fantastic tools. But that's all they are is their tools. You know most of these bands. I mean like you know the industry's down like 60 percent in album sales, and they blame it because of music downloads, and it's not the truth. The reason that the industry's down 60 percent is because we live in a MySpace YouTube era where all these big companies think that, you know, that that's how they're going to sell their albums. That's how they're going to sell their artists. And it works, but it doesn't. You know, everyone forgot that, you know, grassroots, grassroots promotions is what works at the end of the day. It's what, it's the only thing that works. You know, MySpace and YouTube, they're great tools, but that's all they are. And there's a lot of other tools that bands forget how to use, like, you know, going outside of shows and flyering and, you know, walking into malls and just or walking through your school and just being like, you know, hey, my band's playing this Sunday, you know? I mean, you know, bands just, you know, I mean, I mean, seriously, I get like, I have like three MySpace accounts. I have a personal one. I probably get like at least 200 band requests a month on it, you know, just on my personal one. And I, and I work in the business, you know? So, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure people probably get an average of 50. I don't I mean like, I listen to them because I work in the business. You know, but I don't want to click. I mean, for the most part, if I didn't work in the music business, I wouldn't click on them. You know, I wouldn't click my mouse to go to them because, you know, it's, it, I probably wouldn't like it. Or most people just aren't, aren't open-minded because everyone gets solicited by spam and stuff on the internet. So, you know, our, our take is to say, you know, that, you know, that, you know, we were trying to teach bands, you know, that this is what works. This is what has worked in the music business since, since the dawn of it. Grassroots promotions, that's all that will ever work in this business, you know. So, you know, we're, uh, you know, it's, that's why working at this level and teaching these musicians and, you know, doing this is, is a lot better of, uh, you know, it's just a lot, it's a lot more rewarding, you know, just as an individual, you know. Um, you know, the first Battle of the Bands winner that, you know, our, that, that my bosses did, it wasn't for Gorilla, but the very first Battle of the Bands winner, because they ran a Battle of the Bands out of Peabody's, was a band called Chimera. You know, Chimera is a huge national touring band, and they got their start by, you know, winning the Battle of the Bands competition at Peabody's. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, we're going to take the Battle of the Bands winner, and we're going to build a headlining gig around them. You know, we're going to build a whole headlining show around them. And we're going to put a couple bands that we've worked with in this area around that band that have proven to us that they can that they can go out there and draw people and they can do their jobs. And we're going to build local headliners. And we want to take each one of our markets and we want to build like six to seven local headliners that can go out there and, you know, and, and help revive their scene. You know, like the 90s, like 95 through like 98, it was great because the local music scene all over the country was just booming, you know. And MySpace is booming right now, and it's got. It's, I think MySpace is responsible for you know, a lot of bands because it gives them, you know, it makes them dream more. You know, it makes them dream more because I think we we live in an era where you know labels are doing, you know, labels have a hundred bands on them. You know, where 
you know, in like the 90s and 80s, you know, labels probably had 20, 30 tops, you know. And like I said, you know, MySpace is a really good tool, but, you know, I think that it's, you know, at this level, it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's teaching bands how to do it on their own. And it's, you know, and I think that an independent artist, you know, is more satisfied playing a show, of, a show in, you know, in their hometown in front of 450 to 700 people. You know, and I think at this level, it's really rewarding for them. And I think that, you know, it's really rewarding for every band that we work with. Thank you very much. Thank you.